We've had 54 British Prime Ministers to date, going back almost three centuries. And all of those Prime Ministers have something in common. They are all white. Just how socially mobile is Britain today? Could anyone, despite their background or the colour of their skin, become leader of our country? What if you were not born into privilege? What if you were black, state educated and from a low income household? To calculate what the chances actually are of Britain having a black prime minister, we've asked statistician Dr. Faiza Shaheen from the Centre for Labour and Social Studies to examine the data and come up with an estimate for the probability of exactly that happening. It's always difficult to predict the future but she'll be feeding in data from a wide range of sources. She'll also be looking at the particular hurdles black people face if they want to make it to the top. OK, David, so let's start by looking at the economic circumstances that black children are growing up in Britain today. The last survey of the mass population in the UK was the census in 2011. And that found that 40% of black people live in social housing. And that's one indicator of poverty. More recent government statistics have found that as many as 45% of all black children, so African and black Caribbean, are growing up in poverty. That compares to 25% of white children. Wow. Nearly half of the black children in the country are growing up Poor. Yes. That's shocking. The odds from the start are stacked against them. Yeah, right from the start, literally. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at how well black kids are doing throughout their schooling. Our statistician, Pfizer, has been looking at pupil test results. I've been looking at pupil assessment data and breaking it down by ethnicity. In this graph, you can see pupil assessment scores for those aged 7 to 16 years old. White people start at this midpoint and they maintain that level up to the age of 14. Black African and Black Caribbean students start at a lower point. And whilst Black Africans maintain their scores, Black Caribbean performance declines steeply. My word, look at that. That's pretty stark, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's an incredible decline. I mean, it's just, you, yeah. can't, you can't argue with it. But that's not the end of the story. Between the ages of 14 and 16, black pupils start doing a lot better. Both black Caribbean and black African people see a massive increase in their scores. And in fact, by the time they come to do GCSEs, black African pupils surpass white pupils at age 16. That's extraordinary. Uh, I don't quite get, I can't quite get my head around that. Why are they suddenly performing better. What's going on there then? I think it's a puzzle, to be honest. So we looked at some data comparing the test scores of pupils in England against their teacher assessment. And for some ethnic groups, we found that the teachers systematically underestimated their performance relative to how they did in these remotely marked tests. So that suggests to us there's some stereotyping going on that teachers have a view, form a view about the likely capabilities of students from kind of outside knowledge, and that informs the expectations that they have of students in the classroom. And the stereotype view might be that black students are not very good in school, and so they tend to underassess them and have lower expectations for their attainment and their progress than perhaps they should. And these stereotypes will interact with the child's motivation and therefore they're going to try less hard at school. So what are the chances of black pupils getting the required grades? Pfizer has been studying the A-level exam result data. OK, David, to get into a top university, you need to get three A's or more at A-level. I'm already out of the equation. <laughs> I think I've scraped two, I think, if I can remember. The chances of a black pupil getting three A's is just four in a hundred, or four percent. The chances of a white pupil getting three A's at A level is ten percent, ten in a hundred, double the chance. But for those who went to private schools, 
and statistically speaking, they're mostly white, the chance increases dramatically to 28 in 100, or 28 percent. 28 percent of those that go to private school will get three A's or more at A level. That's just stunning. I mean, that's... I mean, those people who, who can afford to send their kids to private school, I mean, they're already a step ahead anyway, aren't they, really? I'm not kind of angry or kind of bashing the system, but it, these are just facts that just speak for themselves. The system is almost designed to assist those who have an economic advantage. In fact, David, if you're a state-educated black boy, you're more likely to be excluded from school than to get the three A's that you need to get into a top university. So this is a huge hurdle on that way yeah. to being Prime Minister. This one knocks out a lot of black people. There's very few that will jump that hurdle. Right. You have to beat these huge odds. Yeah, huge, huge, huge odds. Fortunately, the University of Oxford publishes their admissions data and breaks it down by ethnicity. So I've been taking a look at that. And these are the figures despite big outreach efforts being made by the university to attract black students. We'd expect to see about 4% of their students being black or black mixed race if it was to be representative of the broader population. But as you can see, they've been below the mark. In 2009, they had a low of 1.5%, and in 2015, that rose to 2.5%. But that's still painfully below the representative target of 4%. And Oxford's not the worst. Black students are underrepresented in many UK universities. Things are improving. But as recently as 2012, Oxford and Cambridge universities were found to be disproportionately selecting their students from just three prestigious private schools and two elite sixth form colleges, Eton, Westminster, St Paul's, Peter Simmons College and Hills Road College in Cambridge were getting as many pupils into Oxford and Cambridge as 1,800 state schools and colleges in England combined. Wow. Those top schools, so Eton, Westminster, St Paul's, these are amongst the most expensive private schools in the country. Those are clearly um, fast tracks into Oxford and Cambridge University. And then on, onwards into the more top jobs. Yeah. Uh, and obviously on to being Prime Minister. And here's another troubling statistic. When black and minority ethnic pupils apply to Oxford um, or those top universities, they are less likely to get in than their white counterparts, even when they have the same grades. What? I'm just staggered by that. That really makes me feel angry. Because you think, you know, again, it's, it's, the, it's not that we are less intelligent. It's not that we are less capable. It's the fact that there is, there is a layer, there is, there is a barrier, which is that barrier of discrimination and bias. Every Prime Minister who's won an election since 1937, if they went to university, it was Oxford. Including our previous and current Prime Ministers, David Cameron and Theresa May. Dr Vicky Bolivar from Durham University carried out the research into Oxford and other top universities' admissions data. She believes it reveals an inherent bias within the university's admissions process. The disparity in offer rates suggests that black students are being turned away in greater numbers than white students, even when they're very well qualified to enter these universities. Well, I think that unconscious bias is likely to be playing a role here. Unconscious bias describes the stereotypes that exist in our society about different social groups, different genders, different ethnic groups that admission selectors hold, that all of us hold, have the potential to creep into decision making. It might be that admissions tutors have in the back of their minds negative stereotypes about black students. Uh, it might be that they have unconscious thoughts about whether somebody will fit in in the environment, which of course Oxford University is, is quite a white, uh, socially elite environment. These things might be at the back of people's mind, not, not consciously, but unconsciously. The effects of unconscious bias are well known and can also have an opposite, 
positive effect on the chances for white, privately educated, middle-class students. Part of unconscious bias is that we tend to gravitate towards and uh, unconsciously prefer people who are like us. So it's quite possible that to a degree these admissions tutors are recruiting in their own image uh, because they have very positive associations with people who are like them. It's still the case that the vast majority of the tutors are white, middle to upper middle class, British. And so the values that are celebrated there and the cultures that are appreciated there are relatively narrow. And it's harder, I think, for those institutions to value other cultures and other contributions. But clearly they need to do that. It's been a long and difficult journey. But if a black person were going to make it to the office of prime minister, they'd have to get into this place first. How diverse is that place? How reflective is it of the wider public that it serves? How representative are our representatives? Let's look at our members of parliament and compare them to the country at large, who they're in parliament to represent. White people make up 87% of the wider population, but white MPs make up 94% of parliament. Non-white people make up 13% of the wider population, however, they only make up 6.3% of MPs in Parliament. And while people of Black African or Caribbean heritage make up 4% of the wider population, they only make up 2% of the MPs in Parliament. Out of a total of 650 MPs, just 13 are Black or mixed race Black. So our journey up through the British system, through education, employment, politics, and finally to the office of Prime Minister is almost at an end. So what is the statistical likelihood of a black person making it through the door of 10 Downing Street? Pfizer has developed her statistical model which enables her to make a probability calculation. OK, David, the calculation is complete. The chances of a black child born today making it up through the British system and to number 10 Downing Street as Prime Minister is just one in 17 million. One in 17 million? That compares to one in 1.4 million for their white counterparts. So a black person is 12 times less likely to make it to number 10 Downing Street as Prime Minister than their white counterparts. I'm kind of speechless with that about that, actually. 12 times less likely. Wow. It's what we were saying earlier on about having to work twice as hard. Maybe it's having to work 12 times as hard. I mean, of course, we know that people do beat the odds. Of course. But that is a huge odd to beat. OK. One in 17 million. You know what you've got to do. But, David, that isn't the end of the story. For those who are white and born into wealthy households, who go to private school, get into the top universities, onto the top jobs, their chances of becoming Prime Minister are one in 200,000. Hugely small numbers. In fact, they are 90 times more likely to make it to Prime Minister than a black person. Huge difference. Huge difference. I mean, incredible numbers. Really, really fundamentally uh, staggering numbers. So what, what this is clearly demonstrated to me is that the system is structured in such an elitist way that it, it favours wealth, privilege, over others, particularly people of colour. If you're a state school educated black kid, even if you cross all those hurdles that, we put, that we've already talked about, the system still inherently is going to disadvantage you. Yeah. You would think that they have the more 
fundamental understanding of the difficulties of life, as opposed to somebody who's really been fed privilege all his life, what does he really understand about life? What does he really know about the struggles of life? How is he then able to walk into number 10 and tell us how, how to live our lives? It's quite staggering, really. If a black man or woman is ever going to make it here, they are going to have to make the most extraordinary journey. They will most likely have to overcome the barriers of poverty and the lack of social networks. They will have to fight past the obstacles in our education system and avoid the pitfalls. The chances are they will have to face down discrimination in the workplace and defeat political prejudice in order to rise to the top. Any black individual who can achieve this will need to have a set of superhuman characteristics and qualities and be the most multifaceted and resilient of individuals. And of course, they'll need a healthy dose of luck. That, well, that could take a lifetime.